Law has encouraged me to get off the boat. We're gonna go for a hike. Let's see if we survive this. <laughs> There's absolutely nobody on the street. That's a pretty, pretty rough day. We've just got to the end of the camel pack of water. This may be our last transmission. Welcome to Kioni, arguably the finest jewel in the crown of the Greek island of Ithaca. Ithaca has captivated the imagination of humankind for millennia. Eight centuries before Christ, Homer wrote of the fabled king of Ithaca, Odysseus, and his ten-year quest to return home from the Trojan War. Little did we know that we had a journey of epic proportions on the menu for today. Law has encouraged me to get off the boat for a few hours and we're gonna go for a hike. Yes. Yesterday it was 34 degrees. This morning it's already mid to high 20s. It's almost 10 o'clock in the morning and the hike is around 12 kilometers. Let's see if we survive this. <laughs> So there you go, a Greek ruin for sale with a million dollar view. Well, I'm not sure how much this real estate's worth, but it uh, comes with a few holes in the wall which act as windows or doors. What more could you ask for? Australian farmyard etiquette, always leave a gate the way you found it. <laughs> this is not how you're supposed to hold your wooden stick. It's for defence now. <laughs> defence? What's in here? The crazy Spartans. Should I be worried? Definitely. <laughs> A big shout out to our newest patron, Muhammad. Your generous support helps us to bring these videos to your screen every week. For more information on Patreon, check out the link in the description below. So I asked him if we're going in the right direction to Enovi. That's our destination. He looked over here. It's quite clear. Bearded goat. It's a wise goat. Some of these olive trees are absolutely enormous. You can see they've been sitting here for eons. That one out over there. So all across this trail you've got these steps which are used to cultivate the olive trees and uh, it seems to me that it also makes a, a good base for the goat population which we're assuming are raised for feta cheese. So I think the distance of this trek is kind of irrelevant because you can't really measure the time it will take 
by the distance because it's all uphill, it's all zigzagging, switchback rock paths and a bunch of goat tracks. It's actually quite nice when you get off the stone path here and take a few of the, uh, the goat tracks because you stumble upon these beautiful old ruins of farmers' houses, I suppose, and right where we are now, before it seems we take a turn on the summit here to go on the other side of the mountain, there's a fantastic view that Law's just discovered, and there's a great big old stone water tank. It's pretty impressive. So we've just taken one of those goat tracks off the main stone path and we've stumbled upon this tiny little house. It's got a little sailing boat in the window and a bell. Let's see if we can start an avalanche. Still filming? Yeah. What I'm learning is it's not necessarily about the destination, it's all about the journey and all about taking side tracks. You never know what you're going to discover when you get a little bit sidetracked. We've not gone far off the track, we know our way back to the track, and we've discovered this cool little cabin, which I would say once upon a time was a small chapel. Very, very cool. It's so nice here. Okay, it's mega hot, but just incredible. The views, the things you discover along the track. We're looking forward to making it to Onogi though, so we can hopefully sit down and have a refreshing cold drink. Two hours later. Okay, we've walked up so high that I think I've got the bends. But then again, we didn't really get up here that quickly. It's the middle of the day. It feels like it's about 40 degrees. I'm sure it's not, but it feels like it. Oh, and we've just got to the end of the camel pack of water. So let's hope that we're gonna arrive pretty soon because otherwise this may be our last transmission. We ran out of water and we still have 1.52 kilometers to walk. What sort of elevation do we have? Oh, well, we were at zero when we left, and here it's, what did I say, 430 meters? And to Anogi, there's plus 100 elevation. Many hours later. So we just uh, had a, a small drink in the cafe just behind. It's a... Uh, Half of the hike, actually. I believe this is what's called an oasis. We reached the top and we found the only place open where we were able to get a soft drink and some chips yeah, and we... just what we needed to get our get our fluids up and get uh, a bit of salt back into the system. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We needed we're feeling that. better now. I think we were hoping to find a restaurant and have lunch here, but, but at the end, I think it's better that we only have had some snack something light yeah something light uh, but the funny part is that the hike to go up here to Anogi uh, it was um, saying that it was an easy one and I actually didn't read it well because it was from Anogi to Kioni where it goes down 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 so obviously that's easy but we did the other way around up up all right, let's go down to Kioni. So in the same place where Law learnt about the difficulty level being uh, much easier going down than coming up, surprise, surprise, we also found out that uh, it's recommended to do this hike first thing in the morning or Later. last thing in the afternoon. 
and we can understand why. So by the time we were coming up that road there, I was feeling like I was going to die. Now we're going to take a different route down, which is actually a little bit longer, but uh, Law's intent on having a change of scenery to go down. Let's hope we make it. So we've left the cafe at half past one, and as we're walking along here, there's absolutely nobody on the street. The street is piping hot and the wind, when it does come, is actually very warm. Uh, we need to work out if this is the right path. Yeah, I think there would be one of those little blue and white markers. I see no marker. Anyway, yeah, so there is a bit of breeze now, but it's a hot breeze. We just want to get on the track and off this road and hope that there's a little bit of vegetation to give us a bit of coverage on the way down. One discussion that we just had, which is an interesting transition to some of our earlier sentiment from other episodes, is uh, we're really building a newfound respect for the siesta period in the early afternoon. Oh, yes because as we look around and there's obviously a lot of uh, manual labor that goes on around here to keep the economy running a lot of farming yeah it's essentially a lot of agriculture and you just couldn't do anything here between sort of midday and three o'clock in the afternoon and in fact i would almost argue probably from 11 o'clock in the morning until oh, four o'clock or five o'clock yeah, yeah. So it's really a big question. How does anything get done if you can only do it first thing in the morning or well, late, later you, in the evening? If you work from 7 till 11, it's already four hours. And then from 5 in the afternoon till 9, it's again four hours. And your day is an yeah. eight-hour day. It's Who wants to... Yeah, but then you're starting work at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And as effectively, you're working from 7 in the morning until 9 o'clock at night every day. Okay, sure, there's yeah. a break in the middle of the day, but that's a pretty, pretty rough day. Well, I don't think it's that rough. I just think it's when you have that long break, that siesta, you really have to, to do the siesta and, and relax. And Yeah, you need to be in a cool environment, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And it's just a different kind of lifestyle, I think. Okay. this out. What would this have been? This is the brooch that I've bought for your birthday. It's your birthday at the end of the month, right? So, since arriving in Kioni, we've been um, a little bit lazier than usual. In so much as, well, apart from going for that uh, massive hike, we uh, haven't really been uh, super active, but uh, I think it's only fair that we have a few days to rest a little bit after the chaos that we've been through to get here. So, 
This is what Law spends her days doing. First day I spend my day sunbathing since we arrived in Greece. How are you feeling? Sweaty. Nice. But it's funny because it's the afternoon and as every afternoon there's the wind who starts to pick up and there are boats coming in so I have the best spot to watch them. <laughs> and I think that boat has really some issue with the anchor. It's uh, been floating around sort of 35 degrees each day since we've been here so we're pretty knackered and pretty keen to, uh, to cool down a little bit. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go for a swim. What's up guys? So uh, we've had a couple of very chilled out days here in Kioni. This is a really magic place to visit. So if you ever have the chance to come to this side of Greece and sail around, the town key is fantastic, but there's also the opportunity to put some shorelines out on the other side of the town key here and have your own private pool, which is what Laura is a big fan of oh, yeah, when uh, doing long lines to shore. But uh, we've had a very nice time here. It's our last night, so we're going to head out and treat ourselves to a meal in one of the tavernas here, and maybe even a small cocktail for somebody. It's Saturday night. Why not? Yeah. We've been pretty... She needs an excuse, right? Oh, no, no. But I really love it here. Kiruna is really, really nice. So far, I think it's one of my favorite town key in Greece since yeah. we arrived in Greece. Yeah, it's a pretty nice place. It's lovely, like really super protected. It's protected so from hot. swell. It's been yeah. super hot. It's been very, very warm here. But um, you can tell. We just had a shower and we're already sweating. <laughs> anyway, so we are excited to go and hit the town now and Law has put her hair back far enough to look like a backing dancer to Robert Palmer's Addicted to Love. <laughs> it's, it's a good look. You just need some really dark lipstick and a lot of Is makeup. It a man? No, backing dancer. I have no idea what Anyway, this. so let's go get a drink. Oh yes, by the way, did we say it's really hot here? <laughs> About 12 times. Ah, uh, yeah. The only thing with this place is the catabatic winds that push over the mountains behind us here are pretty strong. So, um... And hot. Yeah, that, that was one of the key criteria before we go out tonight was to make sure... <laughs> getting pushed around by the boat next to us who may not have set his anchor too well. Yeah. In any case, we've got neighbors on both sides of us now, so we're we're feeling relatively confident to get off the boat without too much worry of someone crashing into us. Yeah. Let's just hope that the Germans next to us uh, keep an eye on their boat this evening. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm sure it'll be fine. All good. Let's go get a drink. Let's go uh, refresh ourselves. Thanks so much for joining as we discovered Kioni today. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed making it. If you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe. Showing that thumbs up button who's boss would also help us out a lot too. Cheers, legends. Cheers.